Oh my god, guys. Oh. Oh my god. Money with Yumi here. And today we're not going to be talking about money. We're doing something different, okay? It's going to be React with Yumi. Because a couple days ago, I saw this um, SPH conference. Probably you guys already saw it. And it's wild. All right, let's, let's replay this for some of you guys that, you know, don't know what, what happened. But I'm, I'm pretty sure the entire Singapore knows what happened already. All right, so let's, let's take a look at it. Good morning. Yeah, I'm Hui Min from CNA Digital. I have two questions. Uh, just now you mentioned that the revenue from CLG will now uh, be channeled into uh, uh, the new constitution of the company with new uh, goals, right? So what might these be? Does it mean that uh, the media business will now pivot to uh, emphasize editorial integrity, for example, ahead of uh, adv advertiser interests? That's one. Okay, the second uh, question is, um, this move comes after uh, various corporate initiatives to improve the sustainability of the media business. Is it fair to say that these initiatives have failed? And if so, where does the responsibility lie? Thank you. If I may just uh, interject, uh, I, I, I honestly, I, I take umbrage at your first question. There are reporters from here who receive substantial uh, f uh, funding from various sources, and I don't believe that you will describe yourself as bowing to the needs of advertisers in doing your job. So I think that, please, okay, I, I, I would say, uh, at least for SPH problem, you know, we have always we have always had advertising, and we have never never conceded and uh, to the needs of uh, of the advertisers. All right, so we have always continued to provide fair, reliable, credible reporting. So in, in reporting the answer to this, I, I will tell you first that the, the question, the fact that they had a question SPH title for, 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 for in your words, huh, conceding to the most advertiser, I take umbrage in the comment because I don't believe that uh, even where you come from, you, you concede, all right? In doing your job, you do not concede to the needs of advertisers. So I, I, I must call this out. You can check. Chairman is a gentleman. I'm not. SPH, the purpose of doing this is to make sure that SPH media will continue to do the job we have done so well for so long. Oh my god, what, 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 what did I just watch? I, I can't believe he's saying that. At least he admitted that he's not a gentleman because he's definitely not and I don't even think he's fit to be CEO. And you know, now, now the internet is trolling him, right? Because umbridge is be uh, has become one of the most searched term. And in Google, on Thursday, May the 6th, 2021, it was the number one most searched keyword in Google Singapore. There's no surprise there because uh, people want to know what um, umbridge means. And so what does it mean? It means to take offense or annoyance um, often towards a slight or insult because clearly he was offended by what the reporter was asking poor reporter but I i'm more interested to know about who ung yet chung is let's let's take a look at his background right it says here that he went to school in victoria school and Hua Chong junior college which obviously he's a, a really smart guy and then he got a scholarship from saf and he has three master's degrees. Who needs three master's degrees? Is he like an overachiever? So he has a master of arts from Cambridge in mathematics, a master of military art and science from Command and General Staff College, USA. Thought he would be a more of like a West Point kind of guy. And then master of business administration from Stanford University. So clearly he's a really really smart guy you have to give him that he has a high iq but maybe like a really low um, eq so he uh, rose to the rank of lieutenant general which seems really really high i'm not familiar with the ranks but i think he's like the what second highest maybe and then he became the what is that oh he was the fifth chief of defense good job good job right but you know, I don't see any media experience or background, so why, why was he hired to, to run SPH when SPH is a, a, a largely a media business? 
Um, let's take a look at SPH historical stock price. I'm, I'm, I'm curious now, so let's take a look. Okay, so this guy became CEO of SPH in September 2017. So let's take a look at the stock price from 2017. $2.72. And what is it right now today? Let's take a look. Oh my gosh. I mean, he's been the CEO for what, three, almost four years now? And the stock price just keeps plummeting? Then, then why is he still the CEO? Let's look at the um, net profit in past three in the past three years, right? Let's see. All right, let's take a look at net income. In 2017, look at that. Look at that net income. Net profit, they had a profit in 2017, and last year it was negative. They had a loss, right? They had a loss. Let's look at earnings per share. It was 0 0.22 back in 2017. <laughs> Last year was negative 0.07. What I don't understand is how did this guy with a military background of 28 years turned to become a CEO of a media company, right? So, so that's what I'm trying to understand by going through his history. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Why not hire from within? You know, someone that has been working for the company for like many, many years and know the media business inside out because clearly he has no media background. So why was he the CEO of SBH? I don't get it. And after he left the SAF, um, he went to work for Tomasic Holdings, which is, you know, probably owned by the Singapore government. Um, and then he worked for Neptune Orient Lines, NOL, as an executive director before he was appointed chief executive officer in October. So he was CEO pretty quickly. The problem with NOL is, you know, the company was not profitable, right? And, and what makes me think is like, why did he join NOL? From Tomasic Holdings to NOL. Uh huh. And then I found it. It's because Tomasic Holdings had a 67% uh, stake in NOL, right? Before selling it to France CMH CGM. This is interesting, right? On 19 May 2017, Reuters reported that CMA managed to turn Neptune Orient Lines around, with NOL posting a 26 million net profit for Q1 of 2017. And he has been criticized by numerous publications for not being able to do so despite five years as CEO. And before that, NOL was a freaking loss. Let's see how much money they lost. Oh my gosh. So he had five years to turn NOL around and he did not do it. I mean, what does that tell you as a CEO? Like if you're a CEO, you better make sure that the company turns around and make a profit. You know, this alone tells you so much, right? What I really don't get is the same thing I said before. Like, why wouldn't they hire from within someone with that experience to lead the company and turn it around to make a profit? Because I do not believe for one second that SPH Holdings has no chance of turning this around, right? They could have losses for one year, but you know, if you change the way that you've been doing things to adapt to the current society and the trends of what's happening around the world, I think it's profitable, right? But you know what it feels like? It feels like Tomasic Holdings, maybe, or someone from like the Singapore government, just put him there as a puppet, right? You know, you know those Korean shows where the CEO is not really the CEO of the company? That's what it feels like. And, um, and that's just my opinion, okay? So don't sue me. Um, this is also what he said in the press conference. We believe that we still have this public information provider duty to uphold and we want to maintain this standard. We have been doing so all these years and I believe that going forward under this CLG team will also want to uphold this editorial standard. In a sense, I have addressed your concerns about whether editorial policy will be ahead of advertising interests. I think I'm sure all media do struggle with this, but I'm quite confident that what has upheld Editorial integrity for SPH Media for all these years will continue. There will be no differences. Editorial integrity will take precedence. And you know, I don't, I don't get this point, right? So please educate me. 
on why you have to choose one or the other. You know, if you can integrate your advertising model into your business model and make it profitable, and yet still have that integrity for your news reports, like, is that not possible? So are you saying that those profitable media businesses lack integrity when they're reporting the news? Ugh, it's shit. And he goes on to say, I'm confident that under the CLG, it will be what I call the DNA of SPH Media will still be there and will manifest itself. And rightly so, because editorial integrity would come ahead of pure financial consideration. And if you're a public listed company, you have to generate profits, right? That's the whole point of being in the stock market. It's for investors to invest in your company because they think that your company has a future and it's going to make them money. And that's why they buy into it, right? Have you seen any nonprofit organization being listed in the stock market? Mm -mm. No, right? And usually stock price reflects leadership and management in the company. You know, it's like when Steve Jobs died and Tim Cook took over as CEO, <laughs> what happened to Apple stock? It still went up and still the highest today compared to, to when Steve Jobs died. Um, God bless his soul. So right now, SPH is going to transfer the entire media business into a new subsidiary and the new subsidiary will be injected with $80 million in cash, $30 million of SPH shares and SPH REITs and SPH stake in four of its digital media investors. And guess how much SPH is selling the entire media business for? Wait for it. Negative $110 million. Yeah, negative. And, and don't tell me the bullshit that all media companies around the world are suffering. That's why, you know, <laughs> they're selling it at a loss because that's bullshit, right? Jeff Bezos bought Washington Post in 2013 for $250 million. And three years later in 2016, they reported a net profit, right? So, so don't tell me the crap that, oh, it's a media business. No one's reading newspaper. That's why we're not making a profit. Bullshit. Okay. You have a competent CEO in that seat as the CEO. You can turn this around, right? And that's why when I buy stocks, I don't just look into the financials of the company. I look at who's behind the company, the face of the company, which is usually the CEO. And then I look into the management team, right? The CEO, the CFO, the CMO, the COO, all those people. And especially the CEO, I want to know, like, what is his vision for the company? Where is he going to take the company in the next five to 10 years? And basically, that's why I don't day trade, right? Graphs don't speak out to me. Financials and the management teams, they do. Here's something to think about. Think about what qualities a CEO should have and how should they carry themselves in public? Because don't forget, the CEO is the face of the company and they represent the company. And how do you know if a person is fit for the company or not? Look at their track record, right? Look at their experience and see whether it's related to the industry because this guy, I don't see any media background or experience. So I really don't understand how he became the CEO of SPH, right? And if a business is not profiting, something is going wrong, right? And often it's because the CEO is not a good leader and don't know how to lead the company, right? If you want your company to go into shambles, then, you know, hire this guy. He's the right guy for you. But if you want your company to fly to the moon, then I wouldn't hire this guy. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. No. No. No way. No way. Mm -mm. All right. I'll see you guys next time when I start making real videos, okay? Don't forget to destroy the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell icon so you get notified whenever I post a new video. I'll see you again next time. Thank you guys so much for watching.